the Love Live series has done pretty well for itself over the past 13 years as at the time of this review. And with multiple idol groups, anime series, movies and merchandise, it's no surprise we'd get video games too, though most of them are mobile games. And it still stings a little losing Love Live School Idol Festival earlier in 2023 after nearly 10 years of service, shortly followed by Love Live School Idol Festival All Stars later that year after 3 years of service. So when I first heard about the anime adaptation of Genjutsu no Yohane or Yohane the Bahelian, it piqued my interest. What really got me interested was that after the anime adaptation was announced, subtitled Sunshine in the Mirror, a game was announced a year later. Considering both of these were April Fool's jokes in 2022 and 2023 respectively, it was actually pretty cool to see both of them ending up as actual projects. The game of course is the main focus for today's review, and while this isn't my first radio reviewing a Love Live game, it's the first one I've reviewed with an official English localization. Voices are in Japanese only, mind you. Yohane the Pahelian, Blaze in the Deep Blue, which I'll just shorten to Blaze in the Deep Blue going forward, is an action adventure game and is considered part of the Metroidvania genre, a type of experience where players would explore a large area interconnected with smaller areas while usually fighting off enemies, getting power ups that can either open up more of the area or hidden sections with a bit of backtracking. This genre was popularised by the Metroid series of games as well as the Castlevania games, hence the term Metroidvania. Blaze in the Deep Blue is set in a fantasy version of the Japanese city of Numazu, though in this fantasy setting it's more of a town. Numazu is where the series Love Live Sunshine takes place and features the school idol group Akua. Yohane the Pahelian is a fantasy spin-off of that series and features the members of Akua living their day-to-day -day lives as they work and enjoy living in Numazu. The main character for both the spin-off series and the game is Yoshiko Tsushima who in Love Live Sunshine prefers to go by her alias Datenshi Yohane or the Fallen Angel Yohane. Yohane is her name in the spin-off series in this game and she has returned home to Numazu after failing to become an idol in the city. Over the course of the series Yohane tries to find her place in life and while she enjoys telling fortunes she ends up being a handywoman of sorts for the town and that's all I'll say is to not spoil the series any further. In the game, a mysterious dungeon from the sea surfaces in Numazu and has become the topic of talk in the town. Yohane's friends, who are the other members of Akua, go into the dungeon and haven't come back out, so it's up to Yohane and her companion, the wolf Lilaps, to brave the dungeon and rescue her friends. But is the game any good? Find out in... The Good. The gameplay is where this game really shines. As Yohane explores the dungeon, she'll come across monsters that will need to be defeated. Yohane can choose to summon Lilaps or one of her friends if she's rescued them to deal damage to the enemies, or she can use a weapon to defeat them too. Weapons are crafted by items that Yohane can get by picking up crafting materials from fallen enemies as well as breakable objects in the dungeon. However, with the exception of Lilaps, every time Yohane summons a friend or uses her weapon, it will drain her darkness points or DP, which is the blue bar in the top left corner of the screen and when that bar runs out, it will start depleting her health bar, the white bar above it. As Yohane crafts stronger weapons, the DP requirement will be higher. DP and HP can be replenished whenever Yohane enters a save room and activates the save point, or if she goes back to her house. At home, Yohane can spend money that she can get from beating monsters and destroying objects to get items that can heal her HP and DP, as well as items that can cure status ailments, or buff her attack and defense. Yohane can also craft accessories that she can equip with the accessories increasing her maximum HP and DP bars and some accessories providing additional benefits such as elemental resistances or reducing the DP cost of using her weapons or summoning a friend. Yohane also starts the game with a musical score. This item activates when she runs out of HP and will refill her HP and DP bars while reducing DP consumption to zero for a short period of time. A vocal track will play in the background as an indicator of how long it lasts, and after being used up, Yohane can obtain another one randomly from defeating enemies, though she can only carry one musical score at a time. Not all of Yohane's friends are used for attacking, as Ruby, when summoned, will use her cotton candy to protect Yohane from enemy attacks. After rescuing her friends and returning back to Yohane's house, each of her friends will have a small chat with her about something they've lost or want from within the dungeon. Yohane offers to either find or keep an eye out for them, and once recovered, she can use a powered up version of her friend's summon. Using some of these summons are pretty useful if you're aiming for certain crafting materials too, such as having Riko using her fire magic on the sushi enemies you might randomly find, 
or having Mari using her enhanced summon to stop time so Yohane can beat an enemy that would otherwise hide immediately as she enters the room. Yohane can also find certain items in the dungeon which can allow her to access or navigate parts that she normally wouldn't have access to, such as double jumping, climbing walls, or moving around underwater. She can also increase the amount of accessories she can equip from certain chests too, so there's a benefit in trying to access every room in an area, as well as backtracking to places you've been to in order to see what else you can access. I like the general look and presentation of the game. I think the pixel art style works best for it, and I really like the environments of each of the areas in the dungeon. The game's music I certainly think fits each area, and I wouldn't expect any less from the voice acting which is great. Especially for little things like summoning Hanamaru for her powered up assist, where she summons a laptop and presses a button on it causing it to explode. There's even different dialogue if Yohane hits the laptop before Hanamaru catches it which gives you some control over when you want to set off the explosion, instead of waiting for the animation to finish. You don't have to be familiar with Love Live Sunshine or Akua to understand the game, though if you are, the game does have references like the aforementioned laptop which is a treat for fans. However, the game isn't perfect, so let's look at what didn't work in… The Bad. I think the game was a bit short and on the easy side, and it's a game I think that can be beaten in one sitting. The game is quite generous with money, so you can stock up on items that can restore your HP and DP, and you can effectively just outlast the game's boss battles by using your items whenever your health or darkness points get low. If you have Hanamaru's upgraded assist, you can also make short work of enemies and bosses too. If you're pressured or if you need to make a quick escape, then you can simply teleport to a save point that you have visited or back to Yohane's house even in the middle of a boss fight. Of course, you'll need to fight the boss at full health again, but the game I think is a little bit too forgiving in that regard. On the topic of boss fights, I felt that there were situations while fighting them where I had no choice but to take damage. But again, being able to pause in the middle of the fight and heal after stockpiling healing items from all the money I've been gathering sort of cancels that out. Though, in saying that, the game being easy does make the game more accessible, but I think it wouldn't hurt for the game to have a difficulty option either. I think there could have been more potential with the dungeon structure. There are certain sections in each area of the dungeon that Yohane goes through, and these sections are one way only, so you can't simply go back a screen. Instead, you need to go back to the room before the one way section to go through them again. These one way sections are unique that the rooms in those sections are randomised every time you go through them, and I sort of wish the game took more of that approach for the entire dungeon. It would certainly add to the game's replayability if the items and rooms were randomised, and even the areas, so you rescue all of Yohane's friends in a different order each time you start a new game. Some of these randomised sections are the only way to get certain crafting materials, so if you're after the stronger accessories and weapons, you're gonna find yourself grinding through these again and again, and it does become a bit of a chore after a while. Other than that, there's nothing else I have to complain about, so let's wrap things up with... The Opinion. Difficulty and wanting the game to be more randomised aside, I really had fun playing through Blaze in the Deep Blue. It's a nice looking metroidvania, and it certainly lives up to the genre. The HP DP system is an interesting mechanic, and I enjoyed rescuing Yohane's friends and using their abilities to help me in beating enemies, and uncovering secrets or initially inaccessible areas. Again, you don't have to be familiar with Love Live Sunshine or the franchise to enjoy the game, but the game is a love letter for those who are familiar with the series or are a fan of Akua. If you're into action adventure games and metroidvanias, then I think you'll get some enjoyment out of this game. It is a little bit on the short side, but I think it's the right sort of game to play on the go, or on stream. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give, Yohane the Pahelion, Blaze in the Deep Blue, Hanamaru and her laptop out of 10. If in doubt, Maru will sort them out. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next, Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.